outro cast. Gentlemen, uh, yes. Banks and Ranks. Is it always Banks and Ranks or is it sometimes Ranks and Banks? Always Banks and Ranks. <laughs> always Banks and Ranks because it's good to know that I'm, I'm Banks, Banks, he's Ranks. So, you know. <laughs> Was there ever a difficulty with the name knowing which order to put it in? Because it's such a clever catch name that no one can forget. But like if we go to the Beatles, for example, it always says Lennon McCartney. And then at a certain point, McCartney tried to make it McCartney Lennon. And you go, mm, doesn't have the ring to it. I mean, B, R, it's the alphabetical order, so keep it simple. Yeah. Well said. Well, congratulations on your new single that's coming out. A lot of people are talking about it, even though it's kind of embargoed information that's not coming out for a couple of days to the, everybody. When did you actually finish Balenciaga? So um, it's pretty recent. Though. Yeah, it's pretty recent. Um, I think a couple, like probably two months ago. Two months ago, but then it was already mastered. And then uh, it was our manager that came in. He's like, yo, can you do this last edit? I'm like, uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the story behind this record is great because uh, it makes total sense for us to um, come back with this one because mm -hmm. we, we first met, we started this thing called ECM, which is Electronic Caribbean Music. So we found our common grounds mm -hmm. um, with this kind of music and it feels great to get back to it basically. Right. A lot of people learned about that genre of music through you two gentlemen right there. Did you know that you were onto something innovative when you started or did you get told no a lot and second guess it? Yeah, that's actually a funny story. We've heard the, um, from a huge manager of a huge artist, not going to name some names, but right. the guy straight up said, guys, Okay, I respect what you guys are doing, but this is never going to work. No one wants to listen to this, and you guys are going to go nowhere with this. Yeah. Exactly. So um, here we are a few years later, and uh, I guess uh, the roots of electronic Caribbean music are here again. And it's really important for us as well, because uh, personally, I come from a Caribbean island, which is called Guadeloupe. I don't know if you know about it. Yes. Exactly. My, my yeah. kids, my daughters are half Jamaican. So there's a lot of Caribbean influence just in our personal lives as well. Exactly. So it feels really good and natural for us to, you know, after all those a few pop things here and there, like to come back with this kind of music and uh, really excited about it. One of my favorite artists that you two collaborated with was Gorillaz. And that was pretty early into your success. Gorillaz, the brainchild of Damon Albarn from Blur. Excellent, excellent band. Do either of you have rock paths or did you just skip over the rock thing? Actually, we love rock music. We recently started getting into it a little bit, slowly but surely. Um, but for both of us, the Gorillaz is high in our esteem. So it was an honor to, to get that opportunity. It was just sent to us um, through Miles Leonard uh, at the time at Parlophone Records in the UK. Um, and it was just like, we're, we're like, wow, shook. yeah, Have, having like Damon Albarn's, uh, stems, vocal stems and our <laughs> yeah. laptops, we're like, wow, what's happening? Uh, we're going back like 2016, 2017, I think. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was just so great to actually, you know, have gorillas making this record and with popcorn, with popcorn actually. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we remixed two, we remixed this one and the one with Pusha T and Mavis Staples. Um, but the popcorn one was the first one. And. Popcorn is a huge Jamaican artist, and, yeah. and and that remix is definitely sitting in the ECM where you have the reggae, yeah. you have the trap in there, and we actually try to keep the original essence of Gorillas, but with our twist, with which was a great challenge, but like so yeah, so pleasing actually. Yeah, you just almost don't want to mess it up. You're like, this song is great, and it's it's, it's a lot of pressure to be honest, but but good pressure. It was fun. Yeah, it's yeah, a good yeah, problem. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A sentence that was just said on your end of the conversation. You just said, and there was Popcon and there was Mavis Staples on the Gorillas track. Those three artists just on one particular thing, yet Lacey Akara, Sean Paul, it really is hard to define what it is that you two do, yet it always sounds like you. Oh, thanks, man. That's a great compliment. Well, we, I guess we just do... Uh... We, we just do us like we, we, I don't know it's hard to explain the DNA is well yeah we were really consciously 
working on developing our sonic identity. I think that was really important for us. Mm -hmm. And that's where the ECM steps in, where we always blend electronic music with organic acoustic sounds to create this perfect balance mm -hmm. of natural and artificial and analog and, and digital and like Banks and Ranks is basically yin and yang and opposing forces uniting one plus one equals three, you know, creating something new out of two totally opposite things. And uh, yeah, that's probably what you guys are hearing, I guess, the DNA. So, uh, but yeah, definitely the Caribbean music in there and, and the way we tweak our sounds and, you know, the textures and everything. So, yeah. When, when it comes to crafting stuff, something I couldn't figure out about you too, is one of you more the top line person and one of you is more the track? We do everything, a bit of both. We do everything. I mean, we really work on our strengths and then that's how we balance each other out. Um, Yannick is really good to come up with top lines and he really worked hard to develop his skills on the, on the keys to, to be quick with chord progressions. I've been doing vocal production since I'm about 12, 13 years old and over 20 years now. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I oh, really man. love doing that. This is something... Not a, a lot, not every producer likes to do vocal productions because it's really takes a lot of time and you have to be really patient. And yeah, when I've, I have to do it is because I feel like I'm forced to do it. Uh, <laughs> so it's always better when we work together. Uh, so yeah, I'm like, yeah, he loves to do it. So <laughs> and I, I love to do drums and bass lines and, yeah. and lyrics. I come from a dancehall and, and hip hop background as well. So the rhyme schemes and the the multi-syllable rhymes and phonetics. Uh, I love that. So we really, really complement each other with the whole set of skills that need to be used in the studio. And, and it's and way faster that way. It's well. way faster, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. And this is another compliment here. There's going to be no backhanded thing that's tagged onto it. So your success reminds me of the Neptunes, you know, Pharrell and Chad. You wow. know, that's, in, that's the biggest compliment you can like say for real. Thank you so much. Not for real, Pharrell. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> it reminds me of them in that sometimes they're the featured artist and sometimes they're the production team behind it. And sometimes they're the remix people. So where you are now, this new single that's coming out later this week, it's credited to you featuring the other artists. Was the plan all along to be the artist out front? Um, we never overthink it. I think we just focus on making the music and then it'll place itself. And the, the team around us will most of the time decide which song goes where, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's always that balance where you're like, like Soke said, we always bounce with the team and be like, okay, guys, we have this record. It could be great for us, but we can pitch it. We're never too attached to the songs because no. mm -hmm. they don't belong to us. Like once you do the song, it mm -hmm. doesn't belong to you anymore. If yeah. you really think about it, uh, it's all a creative process and it's out there. It's like frequencies. So we just let it do its thing. And eventually like, yeah, Balenciaga became uh, yeah, the next single because we we're like, okay, let's do it. And the team, everyone agreed that actually we had a whole strategy planned out and then this song came along and we're like all right scrap this we're going this way yeah especially with our live performances now picking up speed uh i think it's in, really in line with where, where we want to go exactly. for 2023 uh yeah and and as well in this whole like journey we started our own label 31 east uh with uh, artists like rev and press and pablo that are killing it at the moment we're both Canada. platinum right now yeah both platinum and <laughs> within a year and um and it's just been an incredible journey. So we started this label and a joint venture with Universal. And so we have outlets there as well for to put out the songs. But we're always not always thinking about like, you know, the actual song the day we make it. But then we're like, yeah, wherever it goes, um, hmm. it will find a home. So, yeah. With artists who do what you do, and by that I mean primarily write for other artists, but also do your own thing. I find that most of them, it goes two ways. One they're creating like every day or every week something new. And there's this big archive of unreleased stuff. And then there's others who just go track to track to track to track. Like somebody once told me that Dr. Luke had only written like 25 songs literally at that point in time that like, and each song had been cut and placed. And that was that in your case, is there an archive of stuff that it, so that if somebody goes, we want a song, you can go, here you go. 
Okay, so that's that's a very good question. I think it's the first time we hear about that. Um, so I think we would start from the beginning where before Banks and Ranks, there used to be a gigantic archive of research and development and 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 trial and error where we would oh, try oh. crazy ideas, the, the shittiest ideas, part of my French. And then that would lead to where we met each other and we were at a certain level where it started to make a lot of sense. Yeah. And we, but we would still do a lot of beats and, and make a hundred beats for a writing trip. And then finally, none of these songs would get cut because then we had to realize that the songs needed to uh, be birthed in the studio and, and start from scratch with songwriters in the studio. And then when we started doing this, it, it eventually really connected and we started to really have like serious cuts that way. And um, so it's like a pyramid where now we're slowly but surely working on less material, but more. All, every song is very strategic and every song has a home already. Yeah, almost for all of most them. of the time. But we still have like a back catalog, of course, like full of songs that uh, we have to offer. If someone wants a song tomorrow, uh, we can definitely like show some stuff. But yeah, most of the time now is when we get in the room touch wood but it's been really great for <laughs> for the past two years i'd say even a bit more but mm -hmm. almost everything's getting cut so it's uh yeah it's it's a blessing really what was the first cut i asked it because if i say what was your first hit i could look that up on the on the charts but sometimes the first song that was cut that made a difference didn't come out until after the other stuff we actually literally were talking about it right before this interview. Uh, funny story. So um, when we met our management uh, in the UK uh, and Steve Jervier uh, back in 2014. Uh, so 2015, he sent a backing track over. He had like three backing tracks of us. Um, and one of them, so he sent it to Tayo Cruz. And he wrote a track called Kiss Me to it. And it ended up being cut by Olimers in the UK. And that was our first real cut ever as pop producers as Banks and Rings 2015. And it was a huge success in the UK. Mm -hmm. And so that was pretty much the first, first one for us. Huh? Yeah, it, it allowed us to get a nice publishing deal and to kind of be able to up. breathe financially and be able to travel all the time. And it started the journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It started the yeah. journey. That actually leads me to a, a follow-up question with mentioning that Ali Murs cut the song. Sometimes the song that's the hit in the US doesn't come out elsewhere as the single. Sometimes it's the number one single everywhere but the US. Sometimes yeah. the artists have different hits. Have you had that happen where this song is like a number one record breaking thing in the Caribbean and or Canada, and then the US people go, huh? And then vice versa? Yeah, often actually. Kiss and uh, answer the phone. And so phone, yeah, we had a big record back in 2018 in the UK. It was like number top five in the UK and all across Europe. I think it charted a little bit in the Billboard dance charts in the US, but um, mm. not the Hot 100 or even right now what we're having with Rev and Press and Pablo or even in France uh, with Dad Judy this year or Sia. We had like some platinum records there in France with Sia and, uh, and Dad Ju and other artists, uh, even the Sia Sean Paul track as well, mm -hmm. I think now is mm -hmm. close to platinum there. Just, just to say that those records are like really big in different countries, but don't connect to the US. Uh, the US is a really particular market, um, yeah. unpredictable, but yeah, would love to get in there. <laughs> and we've seen you have hits over and over and over again with Sean Paul. What is it that connects you guys with Sean Paul? In other words, Yes, he has to make an album. He needs music. That's great. But is there a, no, we like the same basketball team or something like that, <laughs> that on a personal Look. level that he goes, I want these guys. Yeah, it's really, Sean Paul's a special, special breed because it's really like this loyalty yeah. relationship that we have like with longevity. And it started off with one of our friends named Richie Flores. Uh, he manages two DJ producers in Jamaica named mm -hmm. Chim Records. And then, and that was around the, the beginning. And where, um, right after Ollie Murs kissed me, yeah. we really wanted to work with Sean Paul. And then Richie came in. He's like, okay, guys, I got a track uh, for you to try um, called Quick Nick. A Sean Paul track, yeah. And they ended up, so we worked on it. They ended up being his first single with his signature at Island at the time. Uh, yeah. 
And uh, since that, then they contacted us to actually Sean Paul's brother that's really involved in his career as an exec mm -hmm. producer as well, contacted us like to work on another record, which was Mad Love for David Guetta and Becky G and Sean Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, originally it was Shakira on the record, then mm -hmm. flipped for Becky G uh, for whatever oh, reason. I didn't know that, okay. We are actually worked on the Shakira version uh, for actually two years. So we are going back and forth with other producers yeah. like around the world. Like one was called First Class in Trinidad. The other one, like David got obviously and, like a bunch of people mm -hmm. and, and, and Jigzag yeah. as well. Um, I'm not too sure on this one. Anyways, but uh, so and we've been in touch with them and Sean Paul visited to Montreal at some point for a concert and we linked. And since that day, then we went to Jamaica, came back to Montreal. Uh, we see each other like wherever we are and uh, we keep on working together really like closely and uh, yeah he's really a loyal person as we are and uh, it's been a beautiful journey with Sean oh, yeah. <laughs> well down to the I've last seen, well, Sean Paul's with my dad lately oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can say that on TV but yeah I mean I guess it's legal in the US you know? <laughs> yes. it, it is have, in oh, some of the states oh nice <laughs> Well, the, the last two things I want to ask you about is uh, first thing is when you have an artist who has a, as many hits as you guys have written and or produced and or performed, that's a lot different than a lot of artists who go, I'm going to be on stage 45 to 60 minutes. Okay, I've got three hits, so I have to space them out. I'll open up with one, I'll do a couple new songs and I'll space them out. And then the encore, the last song is that. In your case, you could do 90 minutes to 120 minutes of actually hits. Do you think that we'll see a full scale tour? You know, you guys featuring blank the way that David Foster does something like that? That's really great that you ask the question because right now we're starting this live performance journey and we have this concept called the Banks and Ranks sound system where it's not just us. We're including our artists like Rev and Preston Pablo, um, other, the DJs, other yeah, DJs, MCs, uh, MCs uh, dancers as well. Hmm. and More like a party kind of vibe. Yeah. And, uh, so anything can happen really at this point because... Um, there's a sound system. Sometimes it's just going to be us too. It really depends. But like we, we're coming with this formula where you're like, okay, we're going to see Banks and Ranks live. What are we going to hear? Well, probably some of your favorite hits, but with our twist on it. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's going to happen. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. but the, I mean, <laughs> the, the dream would be to have a world tour where there's like different shows going on at the same time with like famous local DJs, let's say, and uh, Vietnam, like the biggest DJ in Vietnam, does a show, <laughs> yeah. a Banks and Rank show, uh, featuring our songs, and he could do like his own remixes or mashups, and that would be really dope. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's a, long, that's a long-term vision. Yeah, 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 <laughs> There's yeah, no yeah. shortage of ideas with you too. That's what I'm learning. The creativity is <laughs> um, not the like kids. We're like kids. Every day we're like always like pushing the boundaries, and we're like so excited. You know, it's like yeah to learn and just like create stuff and this is what keeps the thing like interesting i think time. we're just we're just really happy doing what we do and really grateful and humble and yeah <laughs> well the last thing i want to know before i let you go what's life like outside of music what do you do and where does the inspiration come from does it is it sports is it movies is it just going away to quiet places for both of you what do you like to do for fun Personally, for me, it's, um, well, I do a lot of music, even my, my time off, so it's, it's, it's a problem, but <laughs> the therapy, <laughs> therapy at the same time as my job, but uh, I love to travel for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm an island boy, so as much as I can, I go back to the islands in the Caribbean. This is where I feel free, uh, you know, be in the water, swim, see turtles, surf, um, and be with my friends and just celebrate life, basically. <laughs> we have two very different lifestyles. You know, Yannick does the the, the single life in uh, downtown in the big condo with the view. And I live uh, like an hour away in the forest and the farms and uh, have three kids and very different lifestyles. But then we meet in the middle, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Complimentary lifestyles. Well, it sounds like the sky's the limit with you two based on that. Vietnam oriented tour I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I look forward to what's to come from you in the near future, the next single, the next collab, whatever it is. Keep up the great work, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Derek. Outro cast.